Finally went back to the bins, had a haul. Was really just looking for Christmas presents, but kept finding good stuff. And boy, did the costs add up. I spent a total of $24.02, $20.15 of which was on clothing. So the rate at this Goodwill is $2.29 per pound of soft goods, and it's $1.19 a pound for hard goods. I got a total of 15 pieces of clothing, really 14, and one piece that was for myself, probably. 20.15 divided by 15 is an average of $1.34 per clothing item. That's not including two pieces of, of hard goods that I got. I have been messing up. I said this in the last video about the bins. I never did bins because the bins in LA, inside of LA proper, is just gang bang. It's just nuts in there all the time. It is a huge riot inside of that goodwill constantly. This perpetual, perpetual war that rages behind those doors. And I, um, I always assumed that the stuff was too picked over or that it was too time consuming to really be worth it because for the amount of time it takes to pick something up, out of the bin, unfold it, and look at it. I can flip through four or five shirts on a rack. So I always thought that the arithmetic would work out in the favor of retail stores, and that was probably a foolish instinct. So I at least got lucky this time. Let me start with the hard goods that I got. This one, <laughs> this is complete. This is a Wii Mario Galaxy 2 with the disc. The disc is pretty scratched up, so I'm holding my breath on this one. It may not work, but I have a Wii so I can test it. This was in one of the clothing bins. And that, that was a theme today. I don't, I'm don't. i very new to the bins. I don't know if this is really common, but I found two really good items that were in the wrong bin. This and a pair of jeans that I'll show you. I also got this, which cost a total of two dollars sixty two cents oh the the game was a buck twenty five there's just a flat fee for those this is closet storage for shoes which I really badly need that cost two sixty two money well spent let me show you the clothes a pair of diesel jeans kind of a weird size and they have a hole in the ass, but uh, these cost a dollar and 34 cents. They're the Larky. I did look these up, not all of this stuff I looked up. You'll see a lot of stuff I would never ever buy if it was at a retail store, but I'm just rolling the dice on because it's so cheap. Um, but these have really high sell throughs, so if you find these at a retail store and they're in better condition than this, I would still. I would still consider paying, you know, eight, nine bucks for them. That was the first item. Looks vintage to me, that tag. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a plaid flannel. Two great, very powerful keywords. I'm gonna call it a flannel. I don't know if it's technically a flannel. It's more of a soft twill, I guess. I don't know if there's really a difference, but it has a really soft flannel-y feel. Plaid flannel, didn't see anything wrong with it. I'm assuming some of this stuff is gonna have stains that it's in the spot, because there's not, there's not really anywhere in the store with bright light that's good for checking for stains. Haven't bought this in, I don't know, two years. This is a black velvet pair of pants. Petite, size 12, boot cut. Boot cut jeans are more popular than you think. This is a Coors Light sleeveless t-shirt, very, very good condition. Looks like it was never worn. 
I don't really know what I'm gonna get for this stuff. I'm gonna price it down because I spent a dollar thirty-four for all of it. This is a kid's Harley Davidson. I almost never buy kids stuff, but um, this was a dollar and thirty-four cents. I'm still I'm still a little sick. That's why I sound stupid. Harley Davidson. One of these hasn't worked so far, but maybe, you know. This one slipped past all the vintage hounds somehow. This is a made in USA for volume. That's the vintage tag. Um, I, you know, this whatever. This is like the hashtag aesthetic, as the kids say. Didn't find any stains on it. It's from 1989. Yep. Yeah. From Pippin is the artist. This is actually the first thing that I found. I There's very few things that I will buy full Goodwill retail Armani exchange. Because it doesn't sell that great or for that much, but when it costs just over one dollar, why not? It's kind of a black lace tunic top. Maybe that's the keyword. This was this was my favorite find of the day. I've never actually seen one of these in real life. It's a, a cartoon chef's hat. Um, I got it. I had to buy it. I'm not putting it on my head because it hasn't been washed and that Goodwill had bins that smelled like somebody pissed swamp water all over the clothes. So that's that's getting washed before I get lice. <clears throat> These are great. These made well basic women's tees, if you price them at the bottom of the market, they will flip immediately. <clears throat> Hard to pull off when they cost four or five dollars, <laughs> but not when they cost a buck thirty-four. Another one I would never buy full price. It's independent. I think that's. It's like a skate thing. Yeah, independent. And then it says on the back. You probably can't see it, but there's kind of a magic eye thing going on. It says, "Fuck the rest." Yeah, man. So badass, dude. So badass, man. Your skate shirt. <clears throat> this is from some music festival I've never heard of. With a bunch of um, great content creators and creatives that are on the shirt, I guess. This is the other one that was in the wrong spot. This was a pair of blue corduroy Levi's in immaculate condition. And these were in the um, one of the hard good carts. And it was interesting. I had to force myself to look at the clothing because I knew I should look at the clothing. That's what I was there for. But because it, it was out of my selective focus for that cart, of looking for hard goods it just <coughs> my brain interpreted it as just interference so I had to consciously focus and make myself look at the clothing which might explain why this was in there because people were just ignoring it these are great um colored Levi's corduroy pants if they're in good condition are in all they're one of the few instant buys for me in terms of pants I try to stay away from pants because they tend to be overpriced. You have to ship the majority of them in a padded flat right envelope. They're almost never true to size. They suffer badly from just inaccurate sizing and vanity sizing. That's when a manufacturer deliberately sizes it, sizes the numbers down compared to its actual measurements in order to flatter buyers. Very common with pants. And they're hard to photograph and on and on. 
and they most you know most of the genes also will have flaws with them but these sell for around 30 bucks the bottom of the market on colored corduroy levi's or just corduroy levi's period is generally around 30 bucks that's the cheap end <clears throat> this might be the highest dollar thing that i got this is not um, very, this is not a great brand. There is a track record on eBay, but it's all over the map. There's some stuff that sold for around 100 and then a bunch that sold for 15, 20 bucks. And there's not a whole lot of supply or demand. Didn't find any comps for this, but this is a real vintage piece. And these cuffs are, that's genuine fur. And I believe it's mink. It's certainly some kind of weasel. And uh, it's interesting. I have a not very often utilized sub skill when it comes to reselling. I tie flies for fly fishing. So I have a pretty good grasp of animal furs and feathers. Being able to speciate, is that a word? Identify the species of different kinds of feathers and furs. And this is not rabbit, it's not fox. It's some kind of weasel because the these guard hairs are really fine. Those are the big ones that stick up. And then the fur underneath it, the thermal fur, whatever it's called, the really fine downy fur that sits underneath the guard hairs is really, really dense. And that's typically a characteristic of, of weasels and otters. So I think it's mink because there were other listings with mink fur on it. This was actually a toss back from another reseller who was just throwing stuff out of her cart into one of the bins right in front of me. I don't know why she would pass up, pass it up since it is only $1.34. I might throw this up for a hundred and just shoot for the moon. Even if I get 30 bucks for that, it's a huge grand slam. And then last piece, this is the other potentially high dollar item of the day. This is a streetwear brand that I see from time to time here in LA, thrift stores. It's got a cat who's also, who's also saying, fuck you. It's freaking twisted, man. <laughs> and I, I don't know how much this will sell for, maybe 30, 40. Here's the tag. I found it at Retail Goodwills t-shirts, but I didn't pick them up because they're all priced, you know, five bucks. The sell through was not crazy on this brand, but why not? <laughs> it didn't have any conspicuous flaws with it. And it was weird. It was just sitting on top of one of the piles of clothing. Someone had clearly been looking at it and decided not to buy it. And these are bins that had been had had been, excuse me, given the piranha treatment a few times. I think, uh, you know, the bin, excuse me, sorry, my head is full of diarrhea. I I don't have a lot of bin strats, as it were. I'm I'm still new. To this part of thrifting but I get the impression that when the first frenzy transpires and there's a hundred people dogpiling one bin they tear through everything so fast there's no possible way that they can go through anything with anything close to a methodical process so a lot of stuff probably slips through a lot of people's cracks <laughs> so to speak and I kept finding all this stuff I was only in the bins for maybe a couple hours and a bunch of that time was spent in the shoe section and finding these shoes. I, if I can produce this kind of a result consistently, this is going to be the new foundation of my entire business model. I know that this is, there are people in my comments tearing their hair out, especially on the last, um, the last video that talked about the Goodwill bins. I know that this is very rudimentary stuff when it comes to reselling, but I just never, there were no bins in San Diego at all, which is where I started reselling. I resold there for two or three years before I moved up here. 
So it was never an option. And then up here, I was just really put off by how crowded the bins were. And it just didn't seem worth it to me. Clearly, I was wrong. There is a secret bins in San Diego, but it's it's a discount center. It's not a, an outlet. I'm not, it's not a proper bin store. It's just cheaper than the normal Goodwills, but it, it takes like 45 minutes to get there. Anyway, that's my haul. Thanks for watching.